All right, hey you guys, this is Rory with the Goddess Isis Coven, and I am here with part two <laughs> of my story. So um, if, if you didn't see part one, scroll back to get to part one so you don't have to figure out what I'm talking about, but I'll just recap really quickly. Um, my chiropractor, James, uh, told me to go visit Martha. I went to visit Martha, I entered her home, and um, she was a little reluctant to ask me to take my boots off. I wasn't quite sure why she was nervous to ask me to take my boots off coming into her home. Because, I mean, shoot, you know, when people come into my home, I ask them to take their shoes off. So what's the big deal? I didn't really understand. I told her I was cool. I'm good. You know, I, I ask people to take their shoes off when they come into my home. So she was good. And then we sat down and began our session. So let's see if I can get through at least this part in this part. <laughs> okay, so I'm sitting there. I really wasn't sure what to expect because I'm pretty open. And when James said, oh, I think you'd really be interested in her, I was like, okay. So I went, you know, and I didn't have a whole lot of background knowledge. I just went. I understood what it meant to connect to spirit because I spent six years in the at the Berkeley Psychic Institute and I was in their clairvoyant program learning how to hone my skills, gifts, and abilities. So I understood what it meant to channel a being, you know? And so I wasn't scared or anything. I understood that part, but I didn't understand why he thought I should go meet with her. So anyway, so I'm sitting there and I'm talking to her and I didn't give her a whole bunch of information. She just kind of sat down. She was an older woman and she, um, she told me that she channels this being and um, he talks through her and then she kind of comes back in and talks with the client so i was like okay so she's she channels to me and she gives me he delivers information through her to me and they're telling me about egypt and telling me that i need to go to egypt and when i go make sure that i'm not with anybody that i have to care for so like don't take any seniors or babies or whatever to make sure that i can receive whatever it is that i'm to receive when i go there and i was like wow that's funny because i was gonna go to egypt the previous year from when i met her and i was like wow but i didn't go i ended up doing a different trip i went to brazil for a spiritual pilgrimage versus is going to Egypt for the spiritual pilgrimage. So that I found that very interesting. So um, so anyway, and I don't even know if it was that year before. I think I'm getting my timeline mixed up. But I didn't end up going to Egypt at that time. Because <laughs> it's been many years now since this conversation. So anyway, so um, they told me a number of things. Um, he told me about me and my gifts and skills and abilities. And, you know, it was a pretty cool conversation. And then as soon as she came out of her trance state, she goes, oh my God, oh my God, do you know who you are? And I heard it in my right ear. I heard a name, but I didn't say it. And I'm looking at her like, who am I? <laughs> like, Rory? <laughs> and so then she goes, you are Isis. And I'm looking at her like, you wouldn't believe this, but I just heard that in this ear. I just heard Isis. And then I was like, that's really strange. And I said, isn't that a myth? You know, and, and this is, I was just being real, you know. And so I'm sitting there like trying to process this. And so she told me how um, some things that happened with Isis when she split and all this. And I don't know, her spirit split into 13 or something. And I was supposed to go back and learn more about what she was talking about. And I never went back. And so, yeah, so I didn't get my lessons in what she was talking about about what the the what her spirit did when she died um i've since then learned some other things and i'll explain those things later on in some future parts of this story so i'm sitting there and i said you know the, the strange thing about you telling me that is that 
when I was 20, um, I grew up in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. And when I was 20, around 20, 21, like we all used to go to Georgetown. And in Georgetown, they had like this strip of um, stores and stuff. And, you know, and, and back then everybody wore gold. They wore the big hoop earrings, the bamboo earrings. I, I, I love them all. And I still have all my big hoop earrings. I'm still there, okay. Um, but at some point, everybody was into Nefertiti. And so was I. I was into the Egyptian jewelry. So I remember going to Georgetown and I bought this ring. And the ring had a crown across it. And I thought it was a Nefertiti ring. So I bought this Nefertiti ring. And at the time, I used to wear rings on every finger. But um, one of my best friend's mom, her name is Gwendolyn, she said, you know what, Rory? You would look really nice if you just wore that one ring on your first finger. And it's this ring right here, okay? And, and she said, make it face outward. So I did. And for years, I wore this ring. I wore this ring so much just right here that I wore it out. Now, I'm way older than 20 now, right? And I still have this ring to this day. And so I told her, you know, I have a ring. And I recently broke it at a convention. <laughs>